can't say anything inappropriate. Okay, so branding. Let's talk about, um, if you'll remember, I told you a few things about what makes a brand um, cohesive and, sorry, I'm talk, talking and looking at the same time. Um, I probably shouldn't have started until I got this. I must have closed it down when I was looking for synonym for otherwise. <laughs> okay. All right. So if you want to take notes, this would be great. Um, or you can go back and look at this YouTube video that we're going to do. Okay. So a brand, you all have looked at different brands um, during our time that we have been talking about social media. Um, but the one of the biggest ways to actually make a brand matter is to have consistency. Because if you create a brand and you are not consistent with it, then you might as well not have even made your brand in the first place, okay? So here are ways. These are the five, I don't know if you guys can read this up here. These are the five keys to what or how you're going to make your brand and make it consistent. And our project is going to revolve around a lot of these, creating your own brand for a fake company. Um, okay, so the first one is voice and messaging. So we have talked a lot about tone, right, in business. Tone, not only, do you want it bigger? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. I can do that. You are so welcome. Look at that. Okay, um, so we we took some opportunities to rewrite emails, right, in different tones. And you saw how that could be perceived um, in different ways by individuals. But tone is not just applicable to our interpersonal communications. It's also... I knew. I knew. Yeah, I know. I know. Well... If I, I didn't want to like, you know, because the angle, yeah, Lacey, Lacey knows. She got this. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Okay. Voice and messaging and tone are important in your business brand as well. Okay. So what that means is, do you have a more formal tone? Do you have a playful tone? Um, do you have a casual tone? Do you have a professional tone? Do you have one where people think, oh, that's an educated person writing it? Or, oh, that's my best friend writing it. Um, there's not a right or wrong. You just have to determine what's best for your brand. Okay? Let me show you, for example, one of my favorite examples of tone on the Instagram. And that would be Miss Wendy's. Has anybody ever looked at Wendy's Instagram account? No. no. She is sassy. Okay. No. I think okay. The one is I know For example, look at this picture and it's got people bowing down to the Frosty. And it says, all hail the return of the vanilla Frosty. Yes. Another way, for example, if their brand was not kind of quirky and like casual, um, another business may be saying like, we are so excited to announce the release of the vanilla Frosty. Come see us today, right? Wendy just says, all hail the return of Vanilla Frosty. Um, they kind of keep that like close. Oh, look, like nostalgia. I can feel the sun on my face. Y'all probably don't remember I've that. Had, I've had those before. <laughs> okay, so this is about um, the Frosty. And you know how people also like to sometimes, I've never done this, but dip your french fries in a Frosty? Yes. And so Wendy's caption here is, can't wait till my fries hear this news too. Okay? So Wendy's is very casual. I want you to notice, is there correct punctuation in this sentence? No. Nope. Is there even capitalization? No. Nope. It feels like a best friend kind of vibe. Yes. That is their vibe, though, and that's what they're known for, especially they've won awards um, for advertising and marketing See, campaigns. Posting so Posting memes. Yeah. Reposting memes is a good way yes. to go, right? We talked about that. Okay. So that is an example of tone. And yes, I'm one of those people with a gazillion tabs open. All right, um, let's go to logo and other brand taglines or marks. Um, we're gonna look at that. Uh, okay, so for example, um, these are your logos, but.
but then also a lot of companies have taglines that you might recognize, right? Um, and that is just their little quip that they have tried to get you to associate with their brand. Mm -hmm. So America runs on Dunkin'. I wouldn't know the Dollar Shave Club tagline, but Subway I would. Eat, re eat fresh, right? Eat fresh? Yeah. Can you all think of any other companies or brands that you know taglines for? Because you mentioned Chick-fil-A, eat more chicken with the cow. Okay, eat more yeah. chicken. Yes. Eat more chicken. What else? Anybody else? I love it. How cows. What about? <laughs> what? Don't eat. Don't eat. Don't eat them. Okay. Yes. What about Burger King? Oh. Uh, the crown. Oh. No. No. <laughs> it's have it your way. Oh. Uh, have it your way. You rule. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, don't forget the music because McDonald's has ba -da -ba -da -ba. Our yes. meats. We have. We, yeah, we have the meats. Yeah. Okay. All right. So those are some good taglines. Obviously, these companies are doing a good job because you remember them. All right. Let's look at the next one. And this is the one that I talked a little bit about with you color palette and typography. Okay. What is. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, fun fact about that. Fun fact. Is they use yellows. Um, yes. Reds, and that's because yellows, I think it's like a hunger thing. Like certain colors mm -hmm. can make you feel a certain way. And yeah. so they, that's why McDonald's and like Burger King and like... And I, I also want you to notice, um, now that we're entering the political election season, uh, keep in mind, politicians are brands as well, right? Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, Donald Trump. Has his definitely has a brand. Yeah. Um, if you look at political signs and advertisements, what are the two colors that are most common? Anybody know? Blue and red. Blue and red. Blue and red. That's, That's it. America. It's America, America. right? Red, white, so when you see that, you think, oh, okay, they at least they love America. If you see somebody with a green political sign, you think, oh. Huh? Who are, you? Who are you? What do you think you're doing? I don't. I wouldn't what think Russia. I would think. Oh. Because liberal and red is Okay. All right. Focus. Focus. Rain back in. Rain back in. Okay. All right. Um. What does typography mean? Uh, that's the font. The font. Yes. Okay. So, um, let's look back down. You passed it. When you see, hold on. Uh, when you see this font. You obviously think Subway. Let me show you this. Um, if you see that, this font right here is definitely Lego font. Um, also, yeah, this is a very um, recognizable right here. This is literally Dr. Seuss has a registered font. Um, okay, so not all brands are gonna have their own custom font, but you do want to be consistent with what you choose. That doesn't mean you only use one font, you may use two or three, but you're gonna stay within that family, all right? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise it's gonna be chaotic and not cohesive I thought you told us when you did that thing for Knoxville. Yes. You had to stick with certain guidelines. I did, look at you listening to me. Okay, photography. What do I mean by photography? Why do you think that that matters in brand cohesion? You make it look pretty, people might want it more. Photography True. Is like, it's like visual appeal. Okay. So, how does it, like how can you. it stay consistent? It shows you what you're doing, kind of like how Subaru, like when they were like taking photos of stuff, it was cars, yeah. dogs, and kids, and families. Okay. And like also, the style that you use, I'm going to use Riley Jo as an example. She has a very distinct style. I know Riley Joe. Yeah. yeah, we all know. We all love Miss Riley Joe. Oh no no no! Mm -mm. That's not the one I wanted. I wanted her photography one. Okay. So when you scroll down this page, you see a very um, cohesive color story. You see a lot of the same um, settings or poses. And it's cohesive. You look at it and you think, okay, I, I know who, I know who this photographer is. Brands do the same thing, okay? They want um, you to be able to tell by glancing that this could fit within their brand. So there's a glare now. Okay, and then lastly, social media guidelines, which we talked about ad nauseum last week, right? <laughs> Who's posting, what they're posting about, how they're applying, and all that fun stuff. Okay. 
So let's look at some, um, go, go a little deeper into this. So for your colors, most likely you're going to have a color palette of two to five colors. Okay. And you are going to be creating that when we do our project, but I'll hand out more instructions on that. Um, brown and gold are synonymous with UPS. If you saw a UPS sign it had bright pink on it, you would be like, what? I think it may be going for like You'd be like, who Instagram. did this? Is this fake? Right? Okay. Um, red and gold is McDonald's. Um, why, Vivian already touched on why you might choose the colors you choose. Um, we talked about that with um, politicians. Um, let's look at some color palettes. Branding. You had double C's today. You, you keep typing two C's. I can't help it. You did it in teacher. You did it in one weird Spanish word. <laughs> Is that one weird Spanish okay, word? <laughs> one weird Spanish word. So let's look at this color palette right here, okay? This goldish blue, da 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 da. Um, if you saw this color palette, what type type of company I'm you can? Amazon. Well, it looks like Windows to me. Windows okay, color. okay. Would you think um, a boutique that sells high end girly like no. shoes? No. no? Honestly, okay. Maybe Lowe's. Okay, I it see, does look kind of masculine or business related, right? Amazon. Okay, um, so obviously colors can change our perception on a particular business. Uh, let's look at this one. What would you think about this? Makeup. Yeah. Makeup. The colors don't hurt my eyes. Okay. It does seem right. It's in your face. Happy, right? I'm trying to grab your attention. Happy. Yeah. Okay. What about these colors? What would you think? Um, what kind of brand would you think of with these furniture colors? Store. Yeah, design a wedding. Okay, so something kind of maybe. I think it would be modern. Modern ish. I don't know. I thought of like a yeah, modern, no, it does. modern living room. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Okay. Um. All right. So when you find your colors, there are different ways, and we will probably get into this of you knowing exactly what color this is. Because, let me show you. Um, you don't, if you, like for example, if you're using Canva, how many of you have ever used Canva before? Raise your hand. Good, most of you, okay, great. It is it does have a free version. Um, let's say you're using Canva and you want to do a flyer, okay? And you want your background to be that particular color of green um, you are not going to want to just go through here and click on the this and try to figure out your green, okay? And you'd be like, oh, that kind of looks like this. What you're going to want to do, once you figure out your exact colors, is find the color code for them. And this will be the color code that you can get printers, that you can use in Canva, that you can use in Photoshop, that you can, I don't think that did that, that you can use anywhere and it will give you the exact color of your that's not the correct thing yeah i saved it as a screenshot and that is no i didn't i think i saved it on the desktop then uh yeah right here okay so what you can do is in canva like i said we'll go over this again um you can upload your image and then you can click on this little eyedropper tool click on that and right here is your color code, okay? And so if you type that in any program when you're trying to come up with a color, that will give you the exact color of your brand, okay? And that's how you stay consistent um, and not just be like, oh, it kind of looks like it, right? Okay. Typography. So typography also can tell us about brands, okay? That gives us the... Um, let me close these. Um, that can tell us things about it. So, for example, let me type a few. What word should I type? I'm going to type hello. Okay. So, we that's one uh, font. Let's do. I'm just, I'm random. I'm not even. Okay. Great. So tell me the difference if you saw a brand and it used this font versus the bottom font. 
what would you think were the differences between these two brands? Mm -hmm. One looks soft, one looks bold. One looks, one very looks more nice. inviting, and the other, it honestly looks like it'd be more technical. Like, oh, yes. Yep, exactly. Like Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. Um, Hello looks like Hello Fresh. It's <laughs> just off one. Okay, the next messaging. Determining the personality of your messaging. This says some is informal, even quirky. So we talked about that um, with Wendy's. You want to do your research about your competitors and figure out um, if they have a large following and you're trying to steal some of the market share, you might want to ad adapt the same type of tone because obviously they're doing something right. Or maybe you want to go in the opposite direction. Maybe um, you think that you can steal some of the market share by offering something new and exciting to people. Um, also, if you do choose to have a tagline, your tagline needs to be used over and over and over and over again so people know it. How do we know that Just Do It is Nike's tagline? Because it's Just Do It. How do we know that? It's on everything. It's on shirts. It's on billboards. It's, it's on, exactly. Hands. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's on the boxes you buy. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Um, okay. And then this talks about the user experience. Branding really is about what experience you want your um, customer, your user to have. Do you want them when they're using or coming to your brand, how do you want them to feel, okay? Do you want them to feel at home and comfortable? Or maybe you want them to feel super hyped up, or maybe you want them to be in touch with their cerebral intelligence side, okay? Whatever it is, that's going to dictate a lot of these choices that you use, okay? So here is the first part of our project. And this is, um, tomorrow it says work on projects, so you're going to want to be working on this. And I'm going to go over this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I will... Are you going to see Maddie? Or do you want me? Okay, I'll just email this to her then. But if you need me to take something to her, she lives right around the house. Oh, I can email it to her. Okay, there you go. Take one, pass it around. Lacey Lou. <laughs> And it did um, staple the way that I don't like it, okay? It's stapled on the wrong side or on the wrong corner. I like it on the left. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Yes. Yeah. And it was also supposed to print in color because on page 7, um, We'll do page seven in a minute. Okay. All right. So let's just go through this packet. This is just um, helping us understand and dive deeper into. Okay. We still have plenty of time. Um, so the first page, page three, is it says name two of the logo's brand names. Um, just name all of the brand names. You don't just, I don't know why it says two. So just figure out, and if you don't know, does anybody know how to do a reverse image Google search besides Cole? Reverse image Google search. No. I'm about to blow your mind. Mary knows how to do it, right? Okay. So you can take a picture of something. I think you might have to have the app on your phone. Is that correct? No, I think you, you can, can do it. it. Okay. So if you have a picture of something, you can click on this right here. Yeah. That camera. Yeah. Upload the file. Um, let's do that. And it will search for that on Google and come up with a website for oh, that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You do I that. Do that That's how I yeah. find out if someone's like I the pictures the they're like, yes. So if you don't know one of these logos, you can do that. Take a picture of it, do reverse Google um, image search and figure that out. Um, and then just do a little bit more kind of like what we've already done about what the brand says. Okay. Um, let's look at page four. Um, this is going to be just some self-exploration, so like why, name a brand you shop for, talk about why you shop there, and then draw the logo. It's fine if you're not a good artist, we all know I'm not. All right, number five. Again, you're going to be looking at these um, businesses and their taglines. The same thing on number six. Um, 
You do not, let me, auto. Of course I'm on Facebook Live with this. I mean, YouTube. Um, this whole project that is gonna include this packet as well as your brand that you're creating, which I'm gonna give you detailed instructions for that on Tuesday. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go over that in just a second, hold on. Um, this packet is gonna be due when you present your brand Louboutin. I feel like you're not focusing. Focus, focus, because you need to hear this. Okay, this is going to be due on February 27th when you present your projects. So, do you, do you have to do it all this weekend? No, but this is your only homework, so I would go ahead and try to finish it. Okay, let's go back to what page was that on? Six. Okay, um, skip seven. Okay, skip seven because you can't see the colors. Seven. Correct. Um, eight is self-explanatory. Nine, you can skip nine, so put an X on that. Um, and you can skip 10 and 11 too. I shouldn't have included those. Okay. All right. So the next, so that's more of the research part, just making sure we understand how brands work and a lot of um, just analyzing brands, which is something that we need to get better at with, before we create our own. The next part of the worksheet is where you're going to start when you're building your own brand, okay? And you are going to talk about this and put some of this information on our PowerPoint. Again, I'm going to tell you how to do that on Tuesday. So um, you could go ahead and start doing that. For your brand, hear, hear this, this is important. For your brand that you're going to create, it can be a personal brand, meaning you could be branding yourself. So Cole can brand himself as a YouTuber. Or you can create a company that you want to create this brand for, like a shoe company or a hair bow company or a toothpaste company, okay? Um, and so when it says assess your current personal brand, that's gonna mean about that brand that you're creating yourself, okay? All right, that sound good? Great, beautiful, beautiful, okay. I'm trying to look and see if that. Okay, that's it. So um, once you have done this, then the next step, like I said, I'm going to give you a handout on Tuesday. But the next step in your project is going to be creating a style guide, which is going to have your fonts, your colors, your tagline, your tone, and your logo. Okay? So it's not going to be an insane amount of work. Um, but it should be fun, but it's going to be putting into practice what you have learned and done over this. Okay. Any questions about branding? Do keep um, any of your notes that you've taken and because we're going to have a test next, a week from today, um, and a lot of this will be included on it as far as what makes a good brand identity and, and the like. Okay. I'm going to end this right now up close and personal.